The calls coming from inside. In a quiet, isolated town, nestled within the shadowy embrace of towering trees and rolling hills, there stood a house that seemed almost out of place in its idyllic surroundings. With its Victorian architecture and ornate iron gates, it exuded an eerie charm that locals spoke about in hushed tones. But as enchanting as the house appeared, there were whispers of a chilling tale that forever cast a pall over its grandeur. One fateful evening, as a torrential rainstorm unleashed its fury upon the town, Sarah, a young woman with a fondness for adventure and an affinity for children, found herself entrusted with the care of two innocent souls. Their parents had decided to seize the opportunity to enjoy a rare night out, leaving Sarah alone with the responsibility of ensuring their children's safety and comfort. As the hours stretched on, the pitter-patter of raindrops against the windows grew almost hypnotic, and the gusts of wind sounded like spectral whispers weaving through the trees. Seeking to dispel the sense of unease that crept into her heart, Sarah huddled on the couch, attempting to find solace in the glow of the television's soft, flickering light. Abruptly, the shrill ring of the telephone pierced through the silence. Startled, Sarah's hand trembled slightly as she reached for the receiver. The voice on the other end was a mere whisper, spectral and distant. Have you checked the children? It murmured, sending a chill racing down her spine. Confusion mingled with apprehension, and she swiftly dismissed the call as a cruel prank. Nevertheless, the uneasy feeling lingered, gnawing at the edges of her mind like a persistent, biting cold. Seeking reassurance, she contacted the local authorities, who offered words of comfort and the assurance that an officer would be dispatched to the residence to ensure her safety. As Sarah sat in the dimly lit living room, the silence was once again broken by the persistent ring of the telephone. Her heart raced as she hesitantly picked up the receiver, dreading the voice that would follow. Why haven't you checked the children? The words slithered into her ear, a venomous hiss that left her paralyzed with fear. In that moment, the boundaries between reality and the macabre seemed to blur, and her mind conjured visions of malevolent spirits lurking just beyond her line of sight. Struggling to maintain her composure, Sarah hung up the phone, trembling as the weight of her isolation pressed upon her. Time seemed to stretch, each second laden with the tension of impending dread. The sound of the rain grew more insistent, as though the storm itself was echoing her unease. Summoning her courage, Sarah ascended the creaking staircase, her footsteps a hesitant cadence in the otherwise hushed house. With cautious trepidation, she entered the children's room, their serene faces illuminated by the soft glow of the nightlight. Relief began to wash over her, the soothing presence of the slumbering children a balm to her frayed nerves. However, her breath caught in her throat as a faint, scratching sound echoed from the closet. Her pulse quickened, and a wave of ice-cold dread surged through her veins. Heart-pounding, she inched towards the closet, her fingers trembling as they brushed against the doorknob. With a swift, determined movement, she swung the door open, revealing the darkness within. In the shadows, a pair of eyes gleamed like polished obsidian, locking onto hers with an intensity that sent shivers cascading down her spine. A guttural sound, a mixture of a whisper and a growl, emanated from the figure concealed within. Panic surged through her veins, and without a second thought, she bolted from the room, stumbling down the staircase in her haste. The terror-fueled adrenaline carried her through the door and onto the rain-soaked lawn, where she finally allowed herself to take a shuddering breath. Her hands trembled as she dialed the authorities once more, her voice a desperate plea for help. When the police arrived, the house was illuminated in a disorienting dance of flashing red and blue lights. With a combination of caution and determination, the officers combed through the house, their flashlights cutting through the darkness like swords. Their search eventually led them to the closet, where they made a ghastly discovery, the heads of Sarah and the children. With their bodies nowhere to be seen. As the years passed, 
the story of Sarah's harrowing ordeal would become a cautionary tale passed down through generations, a chilling reminder that danger could lurk where it's least expected. The house itself, forever marked by the malevolence that had taken root within its walls, stood as a silent witness to the terrors that can befall even the most seemingly tranquil of places. So, dear reader, as you venture into the world, take heed of the shadows that dance at the periphery of your vision, and the whispers that linger in the corners of your mind. Be cautious, be vigilant, for sometimes the calls that haunt us most come from within the depths of our own fears, and the true horror lies in the unknown intentions that may lie just out of sight.